or like my morning healthy routine. Like it's not like that. It's like, you know, things were <laughs> different back then. So there was no, here's a layout for your healthy morning routine to follow. It's not like that. But, um, I mean, the whole Bible though is about being healthy by trying not to sin and denying yourselves and, um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe somebody has a, a better answer to that. Follow the Ten Commandments. Megan, perfectly said. Proverbs and Ecclesiastes explains uh, the way we should live. I just read Ecclesiastes. Yeah. And that's, and Proverbs. Yeah, that's great too, because I just read both of those. And yes, great answer. Um, yeah. Love each other. Good answer as well. Be in relationship with the Lord. Yes. Um, yeah. Love it. Love it. You guys are great. Yep. Our bodies are now God's vessels. So true. And, um, that's another good verse too, is, um, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We don't belong to ourselves. So we must honor God with our bodies. It's a great one as well. Do you do regrets? Do you mean, do I have regrets? Strange that those who aren't believers aren't interested here. Instead, they chose to attack you. Unfortunately, Bo, that's, I get that a lot. And the unbelievers are usually the most angry. And to me, it just exposes that they have hurt and they have, they've probably been through a lot in their lives. Um, and so they choose to take it out on me because they're mad at God, but they're not really mad at me. So I'm okay with it. I don't mind when they are mean to me. It's all good. Andy, yeah, so when I when I say lean on God, I just mean instead of leaning on the world, so instead of going out, getting drunk to numb the pain, instead of, uh, I don't know, watching corn or like leaning on something of the world, open your Bible, read some Bible verses, talk to God, like be in prayer. So that's what I mean when I say um, lean on God. Just literally talk to him like he's your friend, just be in his presence, maybe listen to some worship music, maybe just uh, like literally just talk to him, be in prayer, read your Bible. So like lean on God in your times of pain and your times of suffering and your times of struggle instead of going to the world and saying, I'm in pain, so I'm going to drink it away. I'm in pain, so I'm going to go to a strip club. I'm in pain, so I'm going to do all of these things. Instead say, I'm in pain, God, I need you, help me. I'm in pain, God, I'm going to sit here in prayer on my knees for however long and just talk to you until I feel better. So yeah, one thing my pastor always says, which I don't know if I fully 100% subscribe to this, but he does always say, if you leave prayer and you don't feel peace, then you're not praying, you're complaining. And I don't 100% agree with that because sometimes, you know, we're just going through stuff where we won't, we won't feel peace. Like, I mean, if you're suffering with cancer, I doubt that you're gonna leave prayer feeling very peaceful, right? But I do like that general saying, which if you leave prayer and you don't feel peace, um, you're not praying, you're complaining because God doesn't like complainers. You know, he wants you to, to be in prayer and to follow his will and to talk to him and praise him and worship him. And so, um, yeah, but that's just my take. <sighs> What part should I read? Do you mean in the Bible? The concept of God and religion seems completely nuts to me. Phil, well, that's because God and religion are two completely separate things. Um, I hear you, but believing in God and being part of a religion are completely two different things. Um... What didn't land well? Did I miss something? Wait, somebody said, what does it mean in Galatians 2.20 so that you cannot sin anymore? So, wait, you gave me three different verses and now I'm confused. But, but at the top of my head, and I could be wrong because I'm taking this out of context, I haven't read Galatians in a minute. But when it says you cannot sin no more, it means that we are made clean. We are made new in Christ and we are technically saints when we come to know christ we are not 
no longer sinners. We don't call ourselves sinners. We are still, we're now saints because we are believers. But that doesn't mean we don't sin, okay? We still sin. And it even says in the book of Romans, if you say you don't sin, or maybe it's 1 John. I think it's 1 John. If you say you don't sin, you are a liar and you are calling God a liar. So we're, we still sin. We still, we even see Paul talk about it. I think that's in the book of Romans where he says, um, I want to do what is right, but I can't because of the sin that lives in me. I still choose to do what is wrong. So we still sin as believers, obviously. None of us are perfect. Only Jesus was perfect. Um, but I think that's what the, that verse out of context is saying, is that we are no longer sinners. We are saints, but we still sin. Yeah, if you say you don't sin, that's another sin. I actually agree with you on that. Um, talk about fasting, please. What do you want to know about fasting? I'm probably not the perfect person to talk about this um, because I still struggle with fasting for multiple reasons, but this is my take on it. There's multiple ways to fast. So you can fast from social media. You can fast from food. You can fast from anything that takes away from your time with God. And when you fast, instead of doing that thing, so let's say you're doing a food fast, instead of doing that, instead of eating, replace that time with prayer or with reading your Bible, just spending time with God. Um, yeah. So that's really my extent on my knowledge of fasting. <sighs> Alyssa, what about sin? Did I miss something? My gut can't afford to fast. <laughs> Any more questions about God, about the Bible? Any questions about how do you deal with negative thoughts and doubts? Uh, great question. Um, I think it's normal, first of all, to understand. It's completely normal to doubt and to have negative thoughts. We all have them. Um, I think one thing to note is that that is obviously not from God. Negative thoughts, not from God. Doubting God, doubting things, that's not from God. And so when you know that, and when you realize that, you can say, this thought is not mine. This thought is not from God. I rebuke that thought. The Lord rebuked that thought. I cast that thought out. It is not mine. That is the devil. And you can kind of talk yourself through it and rebuke it because that's not you. That negative self-talk, that negative, those negative thoughts, God wouldn't want you to do that. The devil is putting those thoughts in your head. So when you're dealing with that in the moment, you can literally just say, God, this is not my thought. Rebuke this thought in the name of Jesus. You can literally just talk it out of your head. Um, demand it leave pray uh but yeah it's hard when they continue to show up but the more you do that and the more you say this is not my thought i don't you know that's not my thought the more you do that the easier it'll <laughs> delete that's a good one the easier it'll be over time uh also just you know talking to god in those moments and giving it to him and saying i don't want to think like this anymore god i don't want to have these negative thoughts i don't want to have this doubt god take this doubt from me take these thoughts from me do not let them come back in the name of jesus um but yeah no jose that's that's in the bible to rebuke things is biblical Isn't the devil just an angel? A fallen angel, yes. <clears throat> Thoughts on contradictions of the Bible. Which one? So I actually, my friend Andy on here, he sent me a whole thing of contradictions in the Bible. Um, and it was on atheist.org. And I plan to go through each one 